Hello everyone, today we're going to learn how to solder the uh, Marble Machine Solar Engine together. Uh, what you'll need for this is uh, some handy dandy tools outlined in the instructions. We've got our wire strippers, wire cutters, some regular lead or lead free solder, and of course the soldering iron. Uh, in the kit we have our handy dandy instructions along with this little package um, which includes the marble machine uh, marbles, the uh, motor, and uh, the solar engine. Uh, storage capacitor, time capacitor, the diode, the uh, translator, and uh, the transistor. Solar panel, sticky tape, wires, and screws. Okay, so we'll put the screws aside as well, since we won't be needing those. We'll start with the solar panel. We're gonna take a closer look here, peeling away the paper, or the uh, covering. All right, so we're gonna take this solar panel and start off with the first component in the instructions, which is the, I believe this is the uh, level trigger. And so as per the instructions, we're gonna take the wire cutters and cut these down to length. You can see now that it's just right after the, the bend. All right, so one of the tips that I have for you guys when soldering this together is to add a bit of solder to one of the pads uh, before actually trying to put your component down on it. This will help with <clears throat> holding the component in place so that you can go ahead and uh, solder the rest of the leads. And so I try to do this for uh, one of each pin per component and then both uh, motor leads. And so we have to be careful to pay attention to which way the uh, level trigger and transistor go on the board and to make sure that you are actually using the correct component. And so uh, the level trigger goes face down and we're just going to hold this and solder the first lead in place. Now you can also see that these pins are spaced farther apart than at the actual pads. And so what we need to do is just give them a bit of a squeeze to bend in place. There we go. And we're now going to solder this on the board. And try your best to get everything, all the pins centered on the pads, like so. There we go. And we'll now take the solder and solder the rest of those pins. And so I'm uh, doing my best without a vise to hold the board in place since I'm guessing most of you probably won't have a vise either. So you make sure you tap down one lead first, get it sitting just the way you like it, and then you can go ahead and press down. Since there's already some solder on those pads, you shouldn't need any more. You can press down the, the, the lead to make it sink into that solder blob and then just touch it up with your solder iron. And there you go. We'll now cut the capacitor down to length. We'll just make sure the polarity is correct and, uh, and solder it down. All right, so with the, uh, the diode, we're going to trim the leads again. Um, cutting down, so there's only about two millimeters on each side. There we go. Okay, so the diode's a little bit harder to do since it's a smaller component, so you may want to try using uh, tweezers or something else to hold it in place. So make sure that the black stripe is oriented uh, forwards, upwards, towards these components. And we're just going to take it and placed in the blob of solder that we've already placed on that pad. And then what you can do is you just take your finger and push it down onto the other pad and add some solder. There we go. And so the last component, <clears throat> which is the capacitor, the leads need to be bent like this with the stripe facing your body. And with this guy, it's a little bit tricky. You have to make sure that 
you cut the leads nice and short. So I put the wire cutters right against the body of the capacitor and then cut away, leaving just a little bit of wire on the bottom there. So then we're going to flip it up. And again, we have our blob of solder that's sitting on this pad. So we're gonna take the capacitor, place it down, heat up the blob, and that will hold it in place. And make sure not to bend this guy too much because if you bend him, he will end up ripping off the pad below. And so we'll just take our solder guard and add a little bit more solder onto that pad. And uh, there we go. All the components are now connected. We're now gonna move on to soldering the motor. All right, so we're gonna start off by stripping our motor wire. You're going to want to use your wire strippers and take off about two millimeters of wire. Go. And the other side. There we go. And we're gonna do the, uh, the other side as well. Just with my fingernails. There we go. And again with the wire strippers. All right, so now that we've stripped our wire, our wire strippers, uh, we're gonna quickly just tin the leads to make soldering a little bit easier. Now, this can be a little bit tricky if you don't have a third hand, which you know humans were not actually born with. So I'm just gonna take my soldering iron, heat it up a bit, touch it against the wire, and touch the solder. There we go. And that's just gonna make it so the wires don't actually separate uh, when you're soldering it to the pad. So yeah, it makes it a little tricky. Now you can use a, uh, a clamp or something similar to make your life a whole lot easier. Um, but the say Levy, we don't have one right now. Okay, so now that we have our uh, wire tinned, we've got some solder on these pads. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. We're gonna solder the, solder the wires uh, to the pads. And so, I'm just gonna lay this down on the pad. Take our soldering iron and just give it a little bit of a touch. There we go, now it's locked in place and we'll solder the other wire. And I'm just gonna hold my finger there just to keep the wire pressed down a little bit more. There we go. So once you've got it soldered onto your solar panel, <clears throat> you're gonna take your motor and solder it to these metal tabs on, on, the, on the back. So I'm just gonna take this and again, add a little bit of solder to the tabs to make life easier when you're trying to put the two together. The flux in the solder helps clean the pad and make your life a whole lot easier when you actually want to solder it together. We're gonna to take these wires here and just separate them a little bit more and solder them on. There we go, there's one. And there's two. And there we go. We have our solar engine connected to our motor with all of our components in place. The next step is to flip it over and point it at the sun and make sure that your motor shaft spins every about two to three minutes, depending on your, uh, your light. In full direct sunlight, you'll probably get it to spin between 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, once this has been tested, you can move on to the next step of uh, attaching the wooden bracket and uh, sticking the solar cell to the motor. Thank you very much.